Welcome to How to RC. In this session, we're going to talk about electric motors. We have a variety of electric motors here. This is an old Astroflight motor, which is a very popular, very strong brushed motor. You can see the big brush hood sticking out here. You could actually replace the brushes. Excellent motor. No longer available. This is one of a more modern brushed motor. And let me see if I can show you the. So here we have the brush hoods. These brushes are going in at a 30 degree angle. See, they're going in like this. And uh, they have a spring holding them down. This part of the motor is called the end bell, where the brushes are and the bearing. And we have uh, two capacitors here, three capacitors, uh, because as the commutator rotates and the brushes bounce on it, there's sparks forming all the time. And those sparks are what we call white noise in radio land, uh, and it's interference. It's interference. It interferes all across the spectrum of radio, and it will interfere with the control signal from your transmitter to your receiver, because the motor is real close to your receiver. So the capacitors help to absorb that uh, energy from the sparks and uh, keep it from interfering with your radio. So well, this is a DC motor, most common type. We've been using them for many years. This is a this is a Grapner boat motor. Very popular. It's a speed 700 ball bearing torque motor, six to 12 volts, and it's a closed end bell. What that means is that in here, on this particular motor, on most, most of the closed end bell motors, there's a fan in here. And the wires go in here, and the brushes are in here. And basically, you can't change the brushes without a great deal of trouble. Now, here's a closed end bell motor that I've taken apart. Here's your end bell <coughs> with the brushes in it. Okay. So these are your brushes here, and they write on the commutator, which is this. What this is, is segments of copper around the center shaft, three segments, and each one of them corresponds to the coils of wire wound around one of these pieces of core steel that are laminated onto the shaft. And so as the, uh, as the shaft, the commutator and the shaft rotate, the brushes come in contact with different, uh, different magnets out here. These are basically electromagnets. And it energizes and de-energizes so that these electromagnets are drawn to these permanent magnets. And you see, I don't know if you can see in there, there's two permanent magnets in there. One on either side. And they're kind of, they don't go all halfway across the can, but uh, pretty close. And it sits in here like this. And so it, it spins in there, and the brushes are riding on here. And uh, so this is just another uh, DC motor. And the trouble with these, of course, is that the brushes wear out and the commutators wear down. So when I was racing uh, electric cars, there was a whole technology about uh, 
cutting the brushes so that they contacted the commutator in a, as, in a different place to either advance them or re retard the motor to make it go faster or slower and have more power or to reduce the amount of friction on the commutator so the motor could spin faster and easier with less resistance. And then you had, uh, it was easy to buy a commutator lathe so you could take your end bell off, pull this out, throw it in the lathe and, and uh, turn down the commutator so it was perfectly flat and shiny and brand new and made perfect contact with the, uh, the brushes. It was, it was all a, a big deal. But today, if you're serious about going fast, you're talking about a brushless motor. I'll move this over. And this is a brushless in-runner. Okay? It has a commutator like this in there. Looks different, doesn't it? Uh, it is. It's backwards to the brushed motor. This is the permanent magnet. On a brushed motor, the permanent magnets are in the can. On a brushless motor, the permanent magnets are on the armature. This is your drive shaft sticking out here, like this. No ball bearings in there. I took the ball bearings off. And here's the wire, the windings, which create magnetism and, and make the motor spin. And because this is so compact and uh, the magnets are so very strong, these motors rotate very rapidly. No brushes. It's run by a computer in the speed control. The speed control looks at these three wires. I, I borrowed one of the uh, bullet connectors from here. The speed control looks at these three wires and says, all right, the commutator, the magnetism is in this position. Say it's in this position. So if I energize this coil, it will rotate. And as soon as it moves, he'll energize this coil. And as it moves again, it'll energize this coil. So it's going actually kind of like this going here, here, and I can't turn my fingers that way, here. They're kind of in a, in a triangle. Here, here, and here. Round and round and round. And on a sensorless motor, this is a sensorless motor, there's no sensor, the speed control senses the position of the armature from here. There's another kind of motors popular on a lot of cars that have a lead like a servo lead and it's the sensor and then they have sensors in there that send a signal to the speed control to tell it where the armature is. 